just a little bit this morning, and we're going to take public comment first. And um, the reason for that is that we want to do a special recognition for our public safety personnel and our, our firefighters that are here. I'd like to call uh, Chief Dyer up to the, to the podium. Um, as probably all of you know, we had a, a terrible uh, accident with one fatality on Highway 101 just south of Buellton a few days ago. And all of our public safety personnel uh, were involved. Our firefighters after the CHP were, f were first on the scene. So uh, while our, our hearts and our thoughts and our condolences go out to the family of the person that died, um, there wasn't a quite miraculous rescue of a mother and two children. And so uh, Chief Dyer uh, is here and uh, with his, um, the members of his station that were involved with that, and he's going to tell us some more about it. Chief? Madam Chair, your honorable board, uh, ladies and gentlemen, CEO, uh, county staff. Um, last week we had an incredible rescue uh, uh, just south of Buellton on the 101 freeway south. I've got a quick uh, PowerPoint I'll go through quickly to show you exactly what happened. We had a total of 39 personnel there, uh, eight fire engines, two water tenders, um, a helicopter, a dozer, a rescue ambulance, an air light unit, a hazardous material unit, three command chief officers, and a hazmat unit inspector. So as you see through the first slide, you can see that there's a car, there was a big rig that rear-ended a car and the car is teetering uh, on the side of the bridge uh, with um, two, three victims inside, woman and, and two of her uh, uh, minor children. The driver of the big rig is below roughly 100 feet uh, below the bridge. Uh, the, the big rig had gone over the bridge and caught on fire, and the, the, per the person driving that, the truck, had passed away. Now, this incident was really uh, a special type of incident. It was complex. You had a... Um, a fire, a hazardous material incident, you had a technical rescue involved here, as, as well as an ALS uh, transport with three passengers in the vehicle, uh, passenger space intrusion that we call it as a paramedic. Uh, a couple of them had to be flown out. So uh, going to the next slide, you can see what's left of the car. And it's just amazing that uh, we were able to get those three people out, but the biggest thing was we had to try to stabilize the vehicle once it was on, once we got there because it was getting ready to fall off the bridge. And with the the, the length of uh, you know the bridge was above the ground, they, you know the three passengers in the car probably would have perished as well. So that was the number one goal. Next, then you can see um, as it's teetering over on the side of the bridge. Another aspect in here, and I, I believe the next slide will show, go, give me the next slide. The, no, it still doesn't show. You all heard about the Navy Seabees that were there. Uh, the Navy Seabees had a, a crane that they were able to put right underneath the car there to stabilize it, to keep it from going over the side. Now, our rescuers also utilized a tow truck, and they had no less than 10 uh, rope systems on this vehicle to try to stabilize the vehicle and make sure because that's number one because once we started trying to cut them out the vehicle was just teetering there on the bridge and then you also had first responders that were putting their lives in uh, in jeopardy even getting close to the car next as you can see they're still working on the vehicle and below there, roughly 100 feet below, was the truck. Now, the truck had leaked out roughly 100 gallons of diesel fuel out of the saddle tanks, so we had a hazardous material incident. We had a fire originally, and, and at the time, we didn't know if we had a rescue or not. We had ended up having a recovery, and then we had a hazardous material incident, which we had to make sure that the, the fuel wasn't running down the creek. We diked it and stabilized uh, the hazmat incident, at the same time handling the technical rescue above. As you can see, we had a lot of personnel there. It was a, it was a labor intensive incident, and, and these type of incidents are, and, and the helicopters are waiting there to get the uh, people out of the car and get them transported. Next. And as you can see, we have a ladder draped across there, uh, and as the Navy Seabees are in there trying to stabilize the, uh, the vehicle. Next. There it is, that's a good picture right there. And, um, 
we contacted the Navy, Seabees, uh, maybe we could recognize them at a later date. They weren't able to make it up this morning, but they were a huge, uh, a huge help with this unique piece of equipment. And there, as you can see, we're, we're, we're trying to get the, the uh, mother out of the car, and you can see people just dangling over a 100-foot uh, drop there, which is it's just amazing uh, what these firefighters did there. You know, they're cross-trained in, in uh, technical rescue, hazardous materials. They're all EMT. Some of them are paramedics. And, uh, you know, when they show up on scene, this is what you get. You get somebody that's cross-trained that can do all these different type of skills. Next. And it's just, I mean, it's amazing that these three people were still viable and living inside the car. It was just amazing. And... Uh, you know, it took hours and hours to get them cut out. And that's, that's part of the uh, wreckage uh, below. And again, uh, thank God that the fire wasn't too intense to where it wouldn't have uh, impacted the bridge, you know, because I'm sure you've heard of some of those tanker fires uh, that have occurred recently in Santa Clarita and down in Montebello where the bridge was impacted and the bridge had to be replaced. I think that's it. Um, if the board pleases, I'd like to call the names of the folks uh, up here, if that's okay. Please. Uh, Captain Michael Dolcheri. Come on up as I call your names. You're going to come on up here. And they're all, most of them, you know, it was kind of like trying to pull teeth to get them to show up. Mm. Because they just, they just want to, this is what they do. They come to work to do this and... Uh, but I think it's a very special time. Engineer Fred Tan. And as I call your names, come on up. Firefighter Chris Hansen. Captain Mike Klusik. Captain Sabin Perkins. Captain Larry Ryan. Captain Anthony Storinetta. Engineer Mark Acosta. Firefighter Paramedic Greg Knuckles. Captain Gordon O'Neill. Engineer Jeff Snyder. Firefighter Travis Simmons. Engineer Greg Taylor. Firefighter Cesar Martinez. Firefighter Par Paramedic Jesse Esparza. Firefighter Paramedic Rob Mack. Captain Chris McCarty. Engineer Jason Toole. Firefighter Paramedic Michael Matlock. Captain Bob Tanner. Captain Glenn Fiddler. Helicopter Crew Chief Al uh, Kuoff. Helicopter Pilot Chris Spangenberg. Division Chief Ray Navarro. Division Chief Bob Bell. Battalion Chief Woody Enos. And HMU Steve Manner. Now Chief Enos, wherever he is, was the incident commander on the incident. He was the first in battalion chief uh, coming from the North Battalion. And uh, I mean, it's just an amazing sight when you come on something like this. You have fire below with fuel running down the creek, and then you have people's lives in, uh, in danger up there. And they took decisive action, and uh, they're all heroes. So with that. Also, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say that we also had a lot of help there. We had the Sheriff's Department. We had CHP. We had the CBs. We had AMR paramedics. We had CalSTAR paramedics. And, and with that, we all worked extremely well together. And I think you could be proud of, of our public safety workers and, and uh, in this county. They all worked extremely well together. And, uh, and this was a positive outcome. And this is what you get when you get this type of a team working on an incident like this. Well, we are immensely proud of you every day, but we really want to particularly commend you for this incident because as you said, it was multiple hazard and uh, the skill, the bravery, the heroism uh, of the firefighters and of our, all of our public safety, CHP and the Sheriff's Department uh, is just outstanding. So we just can't thank you enough. And I'm just gonna see if other people on the board wanna make comments, Supervisor Wolf. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, um, Chief Dyer, for um, this opportunity uh, for, for me personally and for the community to thank you and uh, the other public safety responders. Um, for those of us who are out in the community, I just want you to know that 
every place I went after this incident, people were, were talking about the incredible um, bravery and heroism that all of you exhibited. Um, I think what Chief Dyer mentioned about the logistics of pulling this off is, is quite remarkable. And I think, um, I think that's one of the things that I've always admired about public safety and, and, and you folks is to, is to make sure that there's a, a good assessment of the situation before you rush in. And I think in a precarious situation like this, it obviously pays off. Um, so many of us um, have wanted to thank you uh, for all of your efforts in fighting wildfires and, and home fires. Um, but this is a little bit this is a little bit different. Yet we know that this is something that you do all the time. And um, yet we had a tragic we had a tragedy in in losing a survivor in losing a, an individual. But the fact that you were able to rescue um, a mom and her two children is um, I, you know, amazingly, I'm speechless. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Supervisor Wolf. Supervisor Levin, you Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just want to piggyback on that as well. And, and, and Chief, I know every time we have a situation, there, there's not a lot like this, but every time public safety steps up, somebody always says, well, that's, that's, the, that's just what we do. That's our job. But looking at that picture, that's not what your job, that's not just a job. I mean, it's not somebody crawling over Crawling onto that car and, and digging those people out of there is, is, is amazing. I uh, saw you guys on Good Morning America. Uh, you did everybody proud. And I'm just waiting to see who's going to play you guys in the movie. So uh, <laughs> congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you, Supervisor Lavenue. Supervisor Carbajal. Um, I was on my way back from Kuyama that day and uh, came across the scene and probably a few hundred yards away from where it actually transpired. And we were being rerouted. Uh, through the 154. So it was, uh, I happened to be in communication with uh, Commander Scoba, who informed me of some of the particulars, but not all of the incident in terms of what had transpired. And it wasn't until later that we learned all the, the details of uh, the heroism and, and the tragedy and, and the um, complexity of the situation at hand. But, you know, I'm gonna s spare the long speech other than on behalf of all our residents, who day in and day out uh, value their safety and value their quality of life. Thank you for what you do. Thank you, Supervisor Carball. Supervisor Gray. Thank you. Um, I'm not surprised that you did what you did, and I think those three folks were just damn lucky that that happened in Santa Barbara County and not somewhere else because you got it done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you very for much. For all being here. Thank you.